the flat-coated retriever is a versatile family companion and hunting retriever, prized for its happy and active demeanor, intelligent expression, and clean lines. A proud carriage, responsive attitude, waving tail, and overall look of functional strength, quality, style, and symmetry complete the picture of the typical flat coat. The flat-coated retriever is the result of an effort in the mid-19th century to produce a game-finding dog with excellent nose who would work within shotgun range and retrieve naturally from land or water. In addition to the St. John's Newfoundland and other water dogs, setters and spaniels were used for their game-finding ability and sheep herding dogs for their weather-resistant coat and tractability. The flat coat met with enthusiastic acceptance in the field and began appearing in English show rings by the late 19th century. It soon found its way to America and was admitted to AKC registration in 1915. You'll be seeing many flat coated retrievers during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so, but all will help your understanding of the flat coated retriever. In general appearance, the flat coat has been traditionally described as showing power without lumber and raciness without weediness. The distinctive and most important features of the flat coat are the silhouette, both moving and standing, smooth effortless movement, head type, coat, and character. In silhouette, the flat coat has a long, strong, clean, one-piece head, which is unique to the breed. Free from exaggeration of stop or cheek, the head is set well into a moderately long neck, which flows smoothly into well-laid-back shoulders. A level top line combined with a deep, long rib cage tapering to a moderate tuck-up create the impression of a blunted triangle. The brisket is well developed and the forechest forms a prominent prow. This utilitarian retriever is well balanced, strong but elegant, never cobby, short-legged or rangy. The coat is thick and flat lying and the legs and tail are well feathered. A proud carriage, responsive attitude, waving tail and overall look of functional strength quality, style, and symmetry complete the picture of the typical flat coat. Judging the flat coat moving freely on a loose lead and standing naturally are more important than judging him posed. Preferred height is 23 to 24 and a half inches at the withers for dogs, 22 to 23 and a half inches for bitches. Individuals varying more than an inch either way from the preferred height should be considered not practical for the types of work for which the flat coat was developed. Since the flat coat is a working hunting retriever, he should be shown in lean, hard condition, free of excess weight. Substance is moderate. Keep in mind that the flat coated retriever should be racier in all respects than the golden or the Labrador retriever. Any more bone or substance than this quality dog possesses would be undesirable. A dog too light in bone should also be faulted. In proportion, the flat coat is not cobby in build. The length of the body, from the point of the shoulder to the rearmost projection of the upper thigh, is slightly more than the height at the withers. The female may be slightly longer to better accommodate the carrying of puppies. Let's begin our detailed examination of the flat-coated retriever with the head, which is one of the breed's distinctive features. The long, clean, well-molded head is adequate in size and strength to retrieve a large pheasant, duck, or hare with ease. The impression of the skull and muzzle being cast in one piece is created by the fairly flat skull of moderate breadth and flat, clean cheeks, combined with the long, strong, deep muzzle 
which is well filled in before, between, and beneath the eyes. Viewed from above, the muzzle is nearly equal in length and breadth to the skull. There is a gradual, slight, barely perceptible stop, avoiding a down or dish-faced appearance. Brows are slightly raised and mobile, giving life to the expression. Stop must be evaluated in profile so that it will not be confused with the raised brow. The occiput is not accentuated. The skull forms a gentle curve where it fits well into the neck. What about this head? The muzzle should be longer. The skull is too domey. And too much stop is not typical of the flat coat. And here the muzzle is snipey. It is too weak for a working retriever. Here again is good head structure. The muzzle is nearly as long as the skull, and the occiput is not accented, but forms a gentle curve where it fits into the neck. Note again the fairly flat skull and gradual, slight, barely perceptible stop. From the front, you can see the moderate breadth of the skull and the flat, clean cheeks. There is good fill below and between the eyes. Any coarseness or weakness is faulty. This head is clean and well molded, as though cast in one piece. The nose is black, like this one, with large open nostrils. The nose will be brown on liver-colored flat coats. The bite can be either scissors or level, although the scissors bite is preferred. The jaws are long and strong enough to carry pheasant or hare, a good example of function dictating type. The lips are fairly tight, clean, and dry so as not to retain feathers. This is an example of a flat coat with too much flu. Note that an undershot or overshot bite with a noticeable gap should be severely penalized, as should a wry mouth. Remember in your judging of this working retriever that broken teeth should not count against the dog. Eyes are medium-sized and set widely apart. They're almond-shaped and are dark brown or hazel in color. The eye rims are tight and colored according to coat color, black in black dogs, brown in liver dogs. These large round eyes are undesirable and detract from an otherwise nice head. Yellow eyes are also to be faulted. These eyes are correctly shaped and placed wide apart. See how the brows are slightly raised and mobile, adding to the alert, intelligent, and kind expression. This dog's ears are correct, too. They are well set on and relatively small. See how they lie close to the head and are thickly feathered. These low-set ears are faulty, giving the dog a houndy or setterish appearance. These ears are correctly set and are of the right size. Note the thick feathering. This is, in fact, a pleasing head overall, seen from the front and from the side. Remember that the head must always give a clean, elegant impression. Now let's discuss the flat-coated retriever's neck and forequarters. The neck is moderately long, strong, and slightly arched, like this, for retrieving strength. It is not trimmed and should be free from throatiness and flow smoothly into the shoulders, which are long and well laid back. The shoulder blade and upper arm are of about equal length to allow for plenty of reach as the dog is working. 
This dog appears to have too upright a shoulder and short upper arm. This dog is correctly angulated. The shoulders are wiry and well-muscled, but not bulky. The elbows and forelegs are placed well under the withers. The forelegs are straight and strong, with good bone. Pasterns are strong with a slight slope. The feet are medium-sized and tight, with well-arched toes and thick pads. They can be oval or round. Removal of dew claws is optional. From the front, you should see only moderate breadth of chest and straight forelegs. The bone is flat rather than round, and while strong, is never massive or coarse, nor is it weedy or fine. This dog's weak pasterns are incorrect. The pasterns should be only slightly sloping for shock absorption. Here again is the correct front assembly. Note the prominent forechest or prow, and the deep brisket reaching to the elbow. Only by holding long hair out of the way can depth of chest and length of leg be evaluated. Judges should use their hands to evaluate the flat coat to determine true lines of the body. The flat coat's body should be long and deep with moderate tuck up and a strong level top line. See how the rib cage is deep and of good length from fore chest to the last rib. This allows plenty of space for the internal organs, especially for adequate heart and lung function. You can see how the rib cage is fairly flat in the fore ribs, showing a gradual spring, well arched in the center of the body and becoming lighter toward the loin. The loin should be strong, well muscled, and long enough to allow for agility, freedom of movement, and length of stride, but never weak or loosely coupled. This dog is too deep in brisket and is low on leg. His coarseness and cobbiness of body is not typical of the breed and is not desirable. This dog has a good length of rib and a strong level top line See how the loin is strong, well-muscled, and long enough to allow for freedom of movement and length of stride. The croup slopes very slightly, and the rump is moderately broad and well-muscled. Even though this lovely bitch has good length of body, the weak top line is not desirable and should be penalized. A roachback is also a fault. This flat coat is too long in loin, which is a serious fault. Too short a loin, which limits freedom of movement, is also considered a serious fault. This dog has overall good proportions. Remember, the flat coat should be shown in lean, hard-working condition. The tail is fairly straight, well set on, with bone reaching approximately to the hock joint. When the dog is in motion, the tail is carried happily, but without curl as a smooth extension of the top line, never much above the level of the back. Hind quarters are powerful, with angulation in balance with the front assembly. See how the thighs are powerful and well-muscled, and how the second thighs are long and strong, with good turn of stifle. The hock joint is strong and well let down. From the rear, note the good muscling and strong legs. This rear is lacking in musculature and the hock is too long. Overangulation or straight hindquarters are also to be faulted. The rear feet, like the front feet, are medium sized, oval or round, and tight with well arched toes and thick pads. There are no duke claws on the hind legs. Now let's discuss the flat-coated retriever's coat. As a working retriever, the coat must provide protection from the elements, 
cold water, and thick ground cover. You can ascertain texture, density, fullness, and lay by brushing up against the grain. Notice how the coat falls loosely back into place. The coat must be of moderate length like this, with straight hairs lying flat. Although a slight wave is permissible, the coat is not curly, woolly, short, silky, or fluffy. The coat is of moderate density and fullness and should have a high luster. This dog is out of coat, but note that he still shows adequate length of hair and thickness of coat. Since the flat coat is a multi-purpose dog, feathering should not be excessively long. Typically, a dog in full coat will have thick feathering on ears, chest, back of forelegs, thighs, and underside of tail, without being bushy, stringy, or silky. A mane of longer, heavier coat on the neck, extending over the withers and shoulders, especially in male dogs, is considered typical. Remember that this can cause the neck to appear thicker and the withers higher, sometimes causing the appearance of a dip behind the withers. Therefore, use your hands to determine the structure under the coat. The flat coat should be shown in as natural a coat as possible, so trimming should be limited to tidying of ears, feet, underline, and the tip of the tail. Whiskers serve a specific function, and it is preferred that they not be trimmed. Shaving or barbering of the head, neck, or body coat must be severely penalized. On the other hand, never penalize a flat coat for being untrimmed as long as the coat is clean and well brushed. Honorable scars should not count against the dog. The flat coat is a strong but elegant, cheerful hunting retriever. Quality of structure, balance, and harmony of all parts, both standing and in motion, are essential. As a breed whose purpose is of a utilitarian nature, structure, condition, and attitude should give every indication of being suited for hard work and should be the basis for your evaluation. As for color, the flat coat can be either solid black or solid liver. These are the only two colors allowed by the standard. Dogs of a yellow or cream color, or any dog of a color other than black or liver, must be disqualified. Sound, efficient movement is of critical importance to a hunting retriever. The flat coat, viewed moving from the side, covers ground efficiently and the movement appears balanced, free-flowing, and well-coordinated. It is never choppy, mincing, or ponderous. Front and rear legs reach well forward and extend well back, achieving long, clean strides. Top line appears level, strong, and supple while the dog is in motion. Coming toward you, the front legs are carried straight forward, not thrown out to the side. Slight convergence toward a center line of gravity is correct as speed increases. And going away, the rear legs follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. There should be no sign of crossing. Though slight convergence is correct as speed increases. The front movement shown here is too wide. This dog is towing in in front. And this rear is cowhocked. This movement is reaching too high in front. Here again is correct movement, efficient, effortless, well-coordinated. Note how the top line remains level, strong, and supple as the dog moves. As for the breed's temperament, character is a primary and outstanding asset of the flat coat. He is a responsive, loving member of the family, a versatile working dog, 
multi-talented, sensible, bright, and tractable. In competition, the flat coat demonstrates stability and a desire to please with a confident, happy, and outgoing attitude characterized by a wagging tail. Nervous, hyperactive, apathetic, shy, or obstinate behavior is undesirable. Unprovoked, aggressive behavior toward people or animals is totally unacceptable. Character is as important to the evaluation of stock by a potential breeder and show ring judge as any other aspect of the breed standard. The flat coat is primarily a family companion and hunting retriever. He is keen and birdy, flushing within gun range, as well as a determined, resourceful retriever on land and water. He has a great desire to hunt with self-reliance and an uncanny ability to adapt to changing circumstances on a variety of upland game and waterfowl. As a family companion, he is sensible, alert, and highly intelligent. A light-hearted, affectionate, and adaptable friend. He retains these qualities as well as his youthfully good-humored outlook on life into old age. The adult flat coat is usually an adequate alarm dog to give warning, but is a good-natured, optimistic dog, basically inclined to be friendly to all. The flat coat is a cheerful, devoted companion who requires and appreciates living with and interacting as a member of his family. To reach full potential in any endeavor, he absolutely must have a strong personal bond and affectionate individual attention. <laughs>